Oh, hello. Hi. Hey oh, there. Sorry. I didn't know where you'd gone. Sorry, <laughs> left you. <laughs> okay. Everyone in? All ready? Good? Guys, it's amazing to have you with us at Comic Con. Can you talk about what it's like for you to be part of this world and to be at this event meeting all these wonderful people? Well, for, it's new for me. It's new to me. I mean, it, funnily enough, I'm in the third series of Stanley's Lucky Man now, launching that today. Uh, having been in The Hobbit, uh, which lends itself to Comic Con somewhat, I think. Um, uh, I, uh, it's a world I didn't know. It was a genre I wasn't didn't really inhabit when I was young. Um, but having seen the success and the reaction of Lucky Man and the reaction that we've had to it, it really brought me into that world. A kind of a uh, you know, an extraordinary world where, where all ages uh, are united by th uh, the same um, excitement, by the notion of good and evil, by um, these incredible characters, fantasy, um, uh, and superpowers. And uh, it, it's wonderful to walk around there, actually, and just it, it seems to be a very safe place for a lot of people um, <laughs> uh, in, in a really uh, incredible way. I mean, it's. Um, it's a world, that, as I say, that I've I've really worn to because of my involvement with Lucky Man, and and for that alone, I'm grateful to take the trip. Yeah, it's fantastically exciting to be here. Mm. Yeah, doing a TV show, you don't normally get to see the fans. Well, you don't you, you don't get to see the fans up close. So to be able well, to exactly. be I mean, this is why we do it. Yeah, to be able so to involved in something this. where you get invited along to this and get to see everybody, and everyone's very excited and overly excited at some point. It's it's great to just experience the atmosphere and see what the show means but to But it's everybody. also wonderful seeing like kids, not, not even kids, kids as I say of all ages, but even the really young ones out there kind of mm. like pointing and as if they're seeing the real characters. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so oh that's the real one. It's you magical. Know? Um, uh, uh, I saw, I happened to watch Graham Norton last night and Chris Pratt was talking about um, uh, in Jurassic and, and his son had been to some um, either Jurassic or the only does Gardens of the Galaxy and his son had gone to some kind of event like this and there was a guy dressed up all day as his character and, 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 and the really son is. came back and said to Chris Pratt, oh I saw the real one today dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. What's been your best fan reaction so far or interaction? Well I've got the bracelet on today, uh, that's the whole point, it doesn't come off, uh, very annoyingly. Um, uh, and, and what I was amazed by, and, and that's what I love about it, that's the world that I didn't know, and that's where you really see not only the extraordinary imagination uh, um, that uh, Stan Lee had, right from all those years ago, uh, understanding how to open people's imaginations, opening their brains, um, opening their minds and um, you know everywhere I go I mean and, and this is not just like as I say people of uh, people of all ages all backgrounds but like you know I, I the, the most extraordinary one I had was Kenny Dalgleish you know one of the great footballers ever he played for Liverpool managed Liverpool uh, he'll be out in Kiev no doubt today but um, when I saw after the first series was on I bumped into him and, and he was just grabbing me he said where's the bracelet where is it, where is it? <laughs> and you know what it's the notion that this thing here means so much to so many people I just find wonderful because it actually suggests that people believe in something and they need to believe in something and they need to understand that there can be a goodness that we can maybe the notion of controlling luck and the good you can do with it, it is to me um, extraordinary at first and now I'm kind of so used to it that uh, I've had more reaction to Lucky Man I would say than almost anything else I've ever done um, because it really does connect with people. You know I've done plenty of dramas that will talk to people for a while and people remember things but this connects to people about them and their fantasies and their thoughts and their, their dreams and their hopes, their aspirations, their fears um, and so those are the reactions that again I just think my god when I first read these scripts I thought what a cop with a lucky bracelet um, how's that going to work and yet it means a lot to people, and as a result of that, it means an awful lot to me. Yeah, just kind of moving on from that is, it's a very, very different take on the kind of superhero genre. So, mm. I mean, did it feel like a risk for you guys going into it? I thought it was extraordinarily beautifully put together because it just tiptoes this line of, of sort of liberating total disbelief and absolute normalcy in a way that makes everything much more tangible and everything much more exciting. You know, just the excitement of when your toast lands the right way up is kind of woo. Yeah. And it's those tiny moments mixed in with you know, sort of huge, big, epic stuff that that to me make it, it makes it tangible and magical and and all the more exciting. And I think that's true. I mean, because actually, I you know, I think one of the the, the ongoing challenges for us as as actors was that 
you know, there's a juxtaposition of this, of this world, of, right. of uh, you know, this fantasy, this comic book world. But you have against that, you have to, to sustain these real characters that you believe in, characters um, that have uh, that are faced with the, the the issues that everyone are faced with. You know, and um, I just think putting those two together uh, is what makes it. You know, this is an incredible world that we try to make credible. Uh, and I think that's the, the beauty of it. I think that's why it's so relatable, and that's why, like, I, I'm the same as this is the first recurring character I've ever done. So, and everybody, first, they, they, they see two things to me all the time. They where's your brother? Meaning they want the bracelet, or where's the bracelet? Because that's all they want, and they feel that they can relate that back to their own life, because all the situations are so relatable, even though there is so much action and so many big things. Everybody thinks these things have happened to me. I wonder if luck does play a part, and it does make everyone think. So to be able to put everybody in that position and think that they can live through this, it's just a, it's an absolute pleasure to get involved in. There are many characters that have luck as a power. I think what makes this one very, very different is is the negative aspects of yeah. what mm. luck can bring as well. How do you think that's influenced the the characters in the show? It's been it's been quite strange for me because it seems. For every piece of good luck that Harry gets, Rich seems to get something bad happen to him. Well, that's a kind of an older brother, younger brother yeah. thing anyway. Which I'm yeah. used to, having an older brother in real life, I'm used to all, all the time, him being the blue-eyed boy and something bad happening to me and him getting off scot-free. So that's been, I've, I've, I want to say I've enjoyed that. It's been horrible for Rich, but it's been quite nice that there is these fantastical things that happen to the main character and bad things, but as opposed to bad things happening directly to Harry, bad things happen to the people around him who he loved, which I think hurt him harder than if something bad did well, happen. It poses an interesting moral dilemma, doesn't it? What mm. do you use the bracelet for? And, and, and actually, it's very interesting to see how um, it can corrupt, you know, how you withstand that. Mm. Uh, what shadow do the bracelets cast over you? At what point do, does the good that the bracelet can do begin to be outweighed by the bad that it can come? And how, how little do you begin to care about that? I mean, I, I think it's... Again, that's very relatable. I mean, of course, it is in, in the world of comic book, but also just in our own world. You know, uh, the notion of at what point do we make a stand against our self uh, about how we're being corrupted by something? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's about... It, it, it's where greed begins and ends, and the cost of luck. Mm. And, it's, and it is a morality play, so it sort of takes it all the way back to kind of revenge tragedy. And, and there are elements, especially with this new series, it does become a lot darker. There are bodies everywhere. Um, and it's I'm delighted to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, left, right and centre. Um, and I think that, you know, these are questions that have plagued us as, um, mm. as people. As, you know, well, the rifts that it creates, I mean, if you look at, you know, right from the nascent of this show, it really started, in a sense, with he, Eve and Harry, you know, and, and their relationship is, again, once again, uh, you know, if, uh, uh, well, the, the show is it's about strange. different relationships, but it, it's interesting to see what the bracelet um, does to these people who it's brought together and how it begins to get in the way of that and of them. Um, and I love the notion of what we are prepared to give in to at times, you know, without realising what we're doing. Choosing a harder route rather than an easy win. Well, sometimes or sometimes you choose the easy win rather than the harder yeah. route, and that's where it becomes difficult. Mm. You know, that's where I ask the question. Just, just out of curiosity, is this the first time you've actually appeared in a comic? Because uh, obviously we have... Yep. Yes, yeah. I yes. think it is. It's really, really yes. exciting. It's so much more exciting than being a doll. Yes, no, yeah, it's that's less sinister. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, really been, okay I've been little Hobbit, that. I've been Hobbit Lego yeah. uh, characters. That's quite strange, isn't it? That must be quite off-putting, yeah. being an actual people holding you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it well. seems a bit more highbrow being in a comic yeah. book, I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> also, also, it's not going to get lodged up a three-year-old's exactly. nostril. That's, 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 that's what I was getting to. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, with um, like Lord of the Rings, you, you, in a comic or when you've been drawn, it's as, a, as the character, but it's you. Oh, no, it's fabulous. Page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I finally get to have a nose as well. I, I don't really have a nose in life. I've kind of got a snoot and I've got a, a proper nose in that. No, it's brilliant and that's a very exciting um, prospect. Uh, you know, to, to see that is just another reminder about what this world means to people and, and, and to be part of that How is, big um, it is, you know, it's yeah. I think it's interesting, going back to what you were saying before about morality, obviously to a large extent comics are kind of accepted as the replacement for a classical mythology. They're a kind mm. of mo mm. moral parallel, uh, parable. 
I'm curious, do you think that we're at an exciting time to the extent that we're now getting more complex in those stories? It's not just about black and white, good and evil. We're getting much more nuanced storytelling and dealing with a lot of real-world themes. Well, I think that's what's interesting to me. I mean, what you're talking about there when you, when you describe the difference between sort of black and white morality and nuanced kind of grey areas that would be the difference between childhood and adulthood mm. you know and it's trying to explain the difference between why we you know put up with certain things and live in a certain way because we have to compromise as adults and that's why i love you know that harry is an adult and he's suddenly thrown into you know, being given these black and white decisions and negotiating this very gray world um, and every single little choice he makes has huge moral implications um, and that's kind of the, the beauty of it these massive ripples that happen as a result of every decision he makes. And also, I think you'll find in this series that, as I say, you know, we have uh, in series two is much more kind of episodic in a sense, uh, a bit more procedural. This is very much one story. I mean, right from the, the opening frame when uh, Eve is in trouble uh, and we uh, is framed for a murder, sconced to Hong Kong, Harry sent uh, ostensibly to bring her back, but yet to try and uh, rescue her. Once he gets there, he's also framed uh, for the same murder. Um, and they come across this, this you know, our, our greatest arch nemesis, yeah, in, in Blake, played by Rupert Henry Jones. But through the story, even though it's very clear that in many ways he's the embodiment of evil, you cannot help but, if, uh, he does pose questions and honest will think he's got a point there. I mean, maybe mm. his path is the right path. Um, and he's so, very convincing. Yeah, convincing, uh, sophisticated, dedicated. Um, and I think that is, is uh, uh, an extension of the notion of just black and white. I mean, I think you begin to ask who is on the right side here, you know. The filming schedule, was it ever stressful, as you said, this year moving into a sort of different sort of arc that's spread out? Have you got any idea how interesting it is filming in real locations? Yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I mean, the most stressful thing for me was finding out that I didn't get to go to Hong Kong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone else got to go to Hong Kong. Yeah. How was Hong Kong, guys? Yeah. It was amazing. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> all you amazing. heard on set. I mean, I think, you know, I, I certainly think this series, uh, very deliberately, you know, uh, uh, Richard, our exec, who's here, I mean, uh, because we were very keen to bring it back, and um, but we certainly wanted to, to um, uh, give more of a nod to the comic book style, visually, in terms of the story, in, term, in terms of the way we tell the stories. Um, and, you know, to start in Hong Kong, I think if, if anything was going to show you Carnival and, and Sky's, uh, Sky One's commitment to making the show bigger, bolder and more ambitious, it was the very fact that we went there. Uh, it's a city that lends itself just the very palette of the city, the noise, the vibrancy, um, the scope of it, you know, the, the, the marriage of the very ancient with the incredible modern uh, worked incredibly well. And as Sienna touched on, we were filming in real occasions, you know. They're not going to fly to Hong Kong unless they're making good use of the bloody place. And, uh, you know, that, to be able to film in the night markets, uh, a lot of the time with people not knowing. I mean, just yeah. that, that cacophony of noise, you know, the stunts, the running, uh, to be filming on sampans, on floating restaurants. This is an ambitious show. And we, we treated the subject, uh, uh, the, very, the very subject that people here are so fascinated about in all the different stories that are being told here today. You've got to treat these stories, these subjects seriously, these worlds seriously but also in, uh, people them with real characters, with real issues, real dilemmas. Um, I think Hong Kong really lent itself to that. Now, it was brutal. I mean, Rupert Penny Jones had the first nine days off, to tell you the truth. But, um, <laughs> but it, it, it was so brutal. Like but, you know, that is the craft, you know. I mean, if, if you're lucky enough to have been... You know, I've been around for a long, long time, and to still be working and still be given the opportunity to get up in the morning and go out and really try and, 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 and meet the challenge of, of finding the truth of a character in this extraordinary world in Hong Kong. In then, the world's hottest taxi. You know, then I think it's, uh, it's a schedule you're, you're very prepared to um, submit to. Do you have a favourite moment from the first two seasons? Obviously you can't say anything about the third one yet. So. God, there were so many. I mean, for me, probably it was, you know, I, I got to... And it was so. It looked so bloody convincing. I think people thought it was CGI. But when I was, uh, you know, riding a speedboat at, that was uh, amazing. Uh, that was at amazing. a great pace uh, through the Thames Bar at four o'clock in the morning, uh, was I entirely in control of it? Not entirely. Uh, but it was very. I mean, that was exciting. But you there was it. so. There was so much. And also, it was the. It was the fact that London. You know, I've. I've. I mean, I. I, I 
I moved to London in 1985, I've been here 33 years, and I probably saw more of London filming Lucky Man than I have in the 33 years I've been here, because it's such an important character to the show. Uh, and, and it really brought London life. I mean, I think that was just, the, you know, the, the fact that you could be, uh, you know, filming the city one day, St Paul's and the Thames, but that just everywhere, it was, it really felt like a card. And I think that's what Hong Kong brings so brilliantly to this uh, uh, season, is that it becomes another character of the show. It kind of swallows the characters and the stories up and we get lost in it. And that then creates the world. But also, yeah, it, it broadens the world of the story. Because yeah we begin to understand kind of where the bracelet comes from, the origins of this bracelet, how this thing came into being and how it's affected people kind of all the way through and, and how we are in this place now, which I thought was really beautiful, yeah. kind of just broadening the world of it and seeing the outreach and the effects and the kind of... The Absolutely, of because of course that's what it's so about. Heavy. It is ultimately about this and that's what people are fascinated by. And we do, uh, particularly Eve's quest uh, to go back there is to return um, this to she's the had enough. She's had yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not doing it anymore. And uh, go back to Hong Kong because she wants to give the bracelet to back. give the bracelet back to the Temple of the Forge, where it was forged back in the olden days. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, there we go. Um, but that so yes, so so to really so properly um, kind of explore the mythology and and the the roots, the nascence of of this thing is what was. Um, Wonderful, and I think is what will really hopefully grip an, a, an audience coming to the series. Are there any other sure. questions? Because we need to. I think we've got to let you go. Sorry, thank you so much. Lovely to see you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Have a good day, guys. Hi, 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 morning, morning, morning. I go here. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey there. Sorry. I didn't know where you'd gone. Sorry, <laughs> 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 okay. Everyone in? All ready? Good? 